but we're just going to go through a few of the finer details for you today. Now what you will see here is this head's actually been refaced and after it's been refaced we will take a depth micrometer and we will check the dimension from here to here on all of the valve spring seats. Now if you take a standard head and do that check you will find they can vary by anything up to one millimeter. Obviously that then will give you different spring heights, different spring tensions and can make the engine run erratically. So we do the dimension check, find out how much one's coming out of each one to lower it down to the lowest one. Then we put it under the milling machine and with this cutter that fits in the milling machine you will notice it's got a pilot on there and three carbide tip cutting blades. That then locates in the valve guide hole, it then winds down on the milling head until we come to zero and then you'll find all eight of the valve spring seats are all the same height which will then relatively make all the valve spring fitted lengths exactly the same which gives you an even running engine. Next job will be put the valve guides in. You'll notice we've got to put two different tapers on the valve guides. These are the inlet ones. A lot more taper to let a lot more air through. These are the exhaust ones. Shallower taper to disperse the heat better. We're now just going to lightly fit the valve guides into position with the mandrel. Pop all the valve guides in place and now we'll just lightly tap them just to get them started. Okay, what we've got is uh, we've got the head under the press now. We're just going to press the guides in. So there we go. Not particularly a lot of pressure, but they must be pressed in. Don't hammer them in, otherwise you'll damage the top of the uh, valve guide. So there we go, there's one in. We'll just slide the head over now. Okay, and now the next one goes in. And this is just a gradual process till you get all eight in. And then what we'll do is we'll move the head over onto the other machine and we will actually ream the valve guides out now. What we're going to do now is the valve guides are fitted so we're now going to ream the valve guides this is a reamer solid carbide reamer that we've had specially made so it's ground to give the exact running clearance for the valve in the guide this is an air operated machine so it's got a cushion of air under here which you'll hear once i press the pedal ready that now lets the head float so what we'll do now is we will pull the reamer down into position, take the foot off the pedal which will lock the headstock, bring it out, start the machine and now it's literally just a straight ream through. Move the head out of the way. And now we'll just try a valve in the guide just to make sure we're okay on size. Okay, here's a valve. This is one of our wasted stem race quality valves, but with triple grooves. So we'll just pop that one in now, and you'll see now, perfect fit. So you need about a thou, thou and a half clearance on exhaust. If you run them any tighter, they'll seize in the guides. But that is about right. So that one's in. So we'll pop that one out now. And just to show you again, we'll put the pressure on for the head. So the head's floating now. Locate the reamer in the top of the guide, like so. Take the pressure off, locks the head, reamer out, start the machine. And again, down we go. You can buy hand reamers, which will do the job. Be okay to do it by hand at home, but obviously we do an awful lot of these, so we, we do everything mechanically, and we make sure everything's perfectly vertical as we go through the guide. We'll just pop that in there, and there you go. So what we'll do is we will cut with this, 
inside the throat, we will cut the valve seat and then we'll put a top angle into the chamber. So here we go. So let's put that on there. It's going to come down till we touch and you'll notice when it touches it normally will not clean up on the full seat. Ready? Somewhere near. There we go. So what it's doing is you'll see how out of true the original valve seat was. So that one's finished for now, but what we'll do, we'll zero that with this. So we'll go down to the valve seat and we'll do it to zero and then we'll recut all the exhaust seats to that same zero. So we know they're all at the same height, but what we're going to do next is we're going to do the inlet seat. So we'll pop the same pilot back in, lock him up, we'll pop the spring seat in. Okay, now we're going to do the inlet. So again, this one's set at a different dimension from the center line to the outside. Turn it around the other side. You can see the three blocks where the three cutting faces are. So we'll pop that in now. Okay, we'll re-centralize the cutter down over the top. There we go. Stop the pressure. Head's locked in place now, so we'll now come down to there, and now we're going to cut the seat again. So here we go. And again, you'll find it'll most probably cut eccentric to start with. Don't worry about that. There we go. So it's cutting on one side now. come around to this side you will see 50 uh, sorry 60 45 and 15 on the top so what we'll do now is we'll zero this one again with the clock gauge and then we'll come down until we've got all the valves exactly at zero so at the moment if you were to put those two in and clock them you can feel there's most probably five thou difference. So there's five thou more to come out of that valve seat to get it the same height as that. Once you've got them all the same height as this side, because we've done the spring platforms on the other side, when we put the springs on, they will all be within a few thou of each fitted length, which then means the engine will run perfectly even instead of some springs are hard, some springs are soft. But that's just an insight.